Well, hello everyone. I'm out in the garden and in my pop-up tent, my den even. It's over 25 years old. We had it when our daughters were little and we've kept it. Well, and I'll tell you later why we've kept it. But I'm ready to rise and shine and I hope you are too. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's rise and shine. And worship God. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Now, I'm asking again, have you still got any Easter eggs left? And I have. I've got this little tiny one here. And I'm hoping I'll have the willpower to keep it until the end of May, Pentecost Sunday on the 31st of May, when the season of Easter finishes. So for our story today, we're going to be looking at one of the resurrection appearances of Jesus. In fact, we're going to begin where we left off last week of Jesus on the lakeside. But before we can get to that bit, we need to go back a bit to before Jesus died on the cross, to the time he was arrested. And even a bit before that, to the Last Supper, when Jesus and all his disciples had supper together. And during that meal, Jesus said to Peter, he said to Peter that you will betray me three times. I guess Peter was very sad about that and probably rather puzzled. And then it got worse because Jesus was arrested. And then well, let's listen to the Bible story. And today it's read by Helen and Richard and Audrey helping. And you may even be able to hear baby Mabel in the background. This story is found in the Bible and is about one of Jesus's friends who let him down. Peter went everywhere with Jesus. He was one of his helpers and Jesus was his friend. I will never leave you. Peter said to Jesus, but Jesus told Peter, tonight before the rooster crows, you will tell people that you don't even know me three times. After the soldiers took Jesus away, Peter was scared. He watched from a safe place. You were with Jesus, a girl said. I was not, I was not. Another person saw Peter. This man was with Jesus, he said. I was not. More people said, you are one of Jesus' followers. You talk exactly like him. I was not. Then he heard a rooster crow. Cock a doo -do -doo. Peter remembered how Jesus had said, tonight before the rooster crows, you will tell people that you don't even know me three times. Peter went away and cried <laughs> as he knew he had let Jesus down. Peter was sorry he hadn't told everyone that Jesus was his friend. Later, when Jesus rose from the dead, Peter told everyone about Jesus. Will you tell people that Jesus is your friend too? Hello. That wasn't an easy story, was it? Poor Peter. He'd really let Jesus down. He said he didn't know him. He denied that he even talked like him. But then the rooster crowed and Peter realised that he'd let Jesus down three times. If we were to give a colour to how Peter was feeling, what colour would you give him? I'd give him the colour blue. 
We often talk about people feeling blue when they feel down and unhappy. Peter was feeling blue. Now, of course, his face wouldn't go blue, but inside he was feeling blue. But I've got an egg here, which is blue. Have you ever had any blue eggs in your egg boxes? I don't think so. I haven't. I had to make this egg go blue. And what I did was I took some blue food colouring and added it to the water that I put in the pan as I hard boiled this egg. And you can see it's gone quite blue. It's a bit patchy blue. It's got sort of stripy blue on it, hasn't it? And that's because I was playing around and this was something I used to do when I was little. We used to take eggs and wrap material around them. And it's a bit tricky, particularly when the egg isn't hard boiled, if it isn't at the beginning. And you wrap it round several times and tie it off. And then boil it and let it go cool. And of course, we're talking about here things that you must do with an adult around. And you must ask before getting involved with it. And choose a good time as well. Maybe a good time is if you're having boiled eggs for tea. And then when it's cool, you can take off the bandage and see that those bits haven't changed colour as well. Now, I've got my blue boiled egg and I'm thinking of Peter and how he's feeling unhappy. So I'm going to draw a face on his egg, on this blue egg. So. Now, I don't think I'll be able to do this upside down, but I'll show you afterwards. I'm going to draw an unhappy face. So, a sad looking mouth. I'm going to give him some brown eyes. running down his eye to poor Peter feeling very unhappy. There we go. There's Peter feeling unhappy. But he didn't feel unhappy for too long. He did feel quite sad for a while and then Jesus rose from the dead and that was exciting and wonderful. So that would make him feel happier. But then he realised that he had let Jesus down and he needed to sort that out with Jesus and Jesus understood. Let's hear how that happened. It happened after that breakfast they had on the lakeside. So we're picking up the story from where we left off on the 10th of May and Anita, one of our Sunday school leaders, is going to read the next bit of when they had finished breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Do you love me more than these? Peter told him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus told him, Feed my lambs. Then he asked Peter a second time, Simon Peter, do you love me? Peter told him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus told him, Take care of my sheep. He asked him a third time, Simon Peter, do you love me? Peter was deeply hurt that Jesus had asked him a third time. So he replied, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus told him, feed my sheep. When you were young, Peter, you would fasten your belt and go wherever you liked. But when you get old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten your belt and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to show by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus told him, keep following me. Peter turned around and noticed John following them. Lord, what about him? Peter asked. Jesus told him, if it's my will for him to remain until I come back, how does that concern you? You must keep following me. So the rumour spread that John wasn't going to die Yet Jesus didn't say that, but 
If it's my will for him to remain until I come back, how does that concern you? It was John who wrote all these things down. Went into that story with Peter feeling blue and sad. But I think he's feeling a bit happier now. Although it's not an easy story. Jesus asks Peter three times whether he loves him. And I think by the third time, Peter was getting a bit fed up. But of course, he had denied Jesus three times. So in a sense, each question, do you love me? And Peter replying, yes, Lord, of course I do, wipes out the time he denied him. And Jesus entrusts Peter with a big task. He's going to be the leader of the church going forward. Jesus asks him, to feed his sheep, look after his lambs, tend his flock. I think after all that, Peter might have been feeling a good bit happier, though he might have been feeling a bit daunted too. But now, let's stick with the happy feeling and make the face on the other side of the egg a happy one. So I'm drawing a smiley face. Him some eyes, but no tears this time. There we go. We've gone from being a sad Peter to a happy Peter. And if you've got a bit more time, you could always decorate it a bit more. I've added a little bit of hair and a hat. A sad person. And now a happy person. There we go. A bit skew with, but he still looks very happy. It may even be a she. It's up to you. So those are our happy and sad eggs. There's a blue egg and there's a happier egg. But we can do similar things with just paper. And again, I'm able to use some scrap paper here. And I folded it in half. And then into a quarter, folded it twice, and I've drawn a curve on it. I'll just go over that to make it clearer. And this makes it a lot easier. It's hard to draw a whole circle or an egg shape because our faces aren't circular. They're more egg-like egg shapes. And then I'm going to cut it out. Again, I'm using scissors, so be careful and have a grown-up around. It's a little bit pointy, so what I'm going to do is fold it up again and just make it a little less pointy like that. And then I can start to use it to draw faces on. Now I've got some I've got ready. The first one I'm going to do is one where I've folded it just in half. I've made the main fold the half one. And on this one, I'm going to draw, well, let's see. On this side, I'm going to draw half a smile, a happy smile. And go for some brown eyes. Just colouring that in. And then on the other side, I'm drawing an unhappy face, like Peter was at the first story. Again, an eye. And some tears. So, we're happy, unhappy on this side. 
and happy on that side. So that's one way to do it. But another way is to take your paper, mix in quarters this time, and the first thing you want to do is draw on your eyes. I'm doing them in a different shape this time. I'm doing them oval like that and oval like that and then on the other side too and I'm using, I pencilled this in first of all so I get it about right so I've got the eyes like that and then I put it this way I'll show you with the smiley side so I'm putting on a big smile and then maybe a few wrinkles and the nose and then I'm going to do the same the other way the nose and a few wrinkles but this time the smile's going the other way So that way up, the person looks unhappy. But if we turn it that way, the person looks happy. I wonder if we can all make unhappy faces and then happy ones. And sometimes when we're feeling unhappy, we need to go away and just have a bit of peace and quiet and maybe hide somewhere. I have been known to hide under my desk or behind the fridge once when I was unhappy at work and I just needed to cry. But then after when I came out, I felt a lot happier. Let's see some people making dens and have a look at them. Hopefully they're feeling happy whilst they're making them but they may look unhappy at times, but hopefully when they come out again, they'll be happy. And after that, we're going to hear a great song, not from me, but a whole host of people. And those of you at St. Lawrence's Infant School may recognize them. What do we need to build our den? We've got blankets, we've got cushions and we need chairs. Shall I go and get chairs? Yeah, let's go. What do we do now? Put a blanket on the chair. Blanket on the chairs? Can you grab the blanket? Uh. Oh, they're massive. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Shall we put this one over? Uh. Yeah? Da, 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 da. No. What do we do with the cushions? Fold them. Where? What, around there? I'll tell you what, move this out of the way so we can see where we're going. cushion on here so yeah. I can see. Right. And we need to put this little cushion on Yeah, so it can be all there. Right. <laughs> and what about these three? Where do they go? On the sitting and they need to go here. Oh, right, one to sit on. Yeah. What about the walls at the bottom? Oh, we could use this, couldn't we? Yeah. We can use this out to make the more Right, brilliant. <laughs> so, we could put well, that. Oops, this this in front. Right, and then it's over the top. Are you gonna poke can you poke your head over the top? Da 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 Can you get in it? Down the bottom.
I hope you enjoyed that song and recognise some of the staff at St Lawrence Infant School. Our God is a great big God and yet he holds us in his hand and he understands those times when we need to hide away maybe in our den or maybe somewhere else and just recover from those things we've got wrong or we're just feeling sad or we're just needing a bit of peace and quiet. And those of you who are parents, who are working from home and trying to educate your children, I think it must be really tough for you at the moment. And I guess you could do with some peace and quiet. So take some comfort from Susanna Wesley, who lived 300 years ago. And she had 19 children Sadly, only 10 of them survived, but even so, in a household of 10 children, and her husband, John Wesley, was often away preaching, there wouldn't have been a lot of peace and quiet. So what she did when she wanted some peace and quiet, and particularly some time with God, she took her penny, her apron, and put it over her head. Hello. And that was the signal that all her children had to be quiet and give her maybe five or ten minutes to have peace and quiet with God. So children, maybe you could make a den at home. You might not have a pop-up tent like this, but maybe you could make some form of den and play quietly in it for ooh, a bit longer than you normally play quietly and give your mum and dad or anyone else in the household 
some peace and quiet. And I've taken this den sometimes on quiet days I've led with churches. So that one adult, and it's amazing how big an adult you can get in this tent. They might have difficulty getting out. They will go in it for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and just have some peace and quiet with God. So this is going to be my prayer point this morning. So I invite you to pray with me now. Loving Lord, we thank you that you are a great big God and you hold us all in your hand. We pray for all those who need peace and quiet today. Maybe because life is so busy and hectic. Maybe because they're worried. Maybe because they need to get some work done. Maybe they need to check a bank statement and are putting that off because income isn't what it used to be. Lord, hold all these people in your hand. Surround them with your strength and comfort. And we pray too for all those who are ill at this time. All those who need peace and quiet to recover. All those who are concerned about the future. So we ask you now to be with us and guard us and guide us as we pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless you and keep you and all whom you love safe and well. And may God's blessing come upon us. And today Rowena will be singing the blessing prayer. God in heaven, hear my prayer. Keep me in thy loving care. Be my guide in all I do. Bless all those who love me too. God in heaven.